And in another high-stakes phone call, US President Joe Biden has been speaking with Chinese leader Xi Jinping to discuss the Ukraine situation. President Biden was expected to ask President Xi not to provide any military or economic assistance for Russia's war against Ukraine. The US believes President Putin informed China about its invasion plans in advance. During talks in Beijing in, in February, uh, President Xi and uh, Mr. Putin pledged limitless friendship between their two countries. So let's explore what's likely to be happening behind the scenes with DW's chief international editor, Richard Walker. Oh, welcome, uh, Richard. Uh, President Biden has quite publicly threatened what he called costs if uh, China assists Russia in this war. What are those costs likely to be? Well, well there are kind of two levels to this, Phil. On the, on the one hand, the US could move uh, to imposing sanctions on Chinese banks or other institutions if it uh, perceives that they are trying to break or sidestep uh, the sanctions that the United States has imposed on Russia. These things are called secondary sanctions. So if, if you break the sanctions that we put on Russia, then we put sanctions on you. So, so that's one step that it could do. But there's another potential level to this, a more serious one, and that is what happens if China does start to provide Russia with military support? Um, and if that happens, then we're entering really quite dangerous territory because the war in Ukraine would then start to look like a proxy war between China supporting Russia and the West supporting Ukraine. Now, proxy wars, these were, these were the stuff of the Cold War. These were the sort of the, the side battles that the US and Russia during those times fought between each other through these proxies. We could be entering a really severe Cold War type confrontation if China goes down that road with China, Russia on one side, Europe and the United States on the other. OK, so, so what is China's position, public position on this war? Well, China's been professing quite a sort of independent position, and it says that it wants peace and security for all, that it stands by things like territorial integrity, the, the sovereignty uh, of individual countries. And Xi Jinping has been talking about peace and security in some of the uh, early reporting surrounding the phone call with um, Joe Biden. But the reality is that China has been rhetorically quite uh, aligned with Russia, um, and it's been openly supporting Russia's complaints in particular about NATO, about the expansion of NATO into Eastern Europe, uh, Russia's concerns that Ukraine was going to join NATO. And it, uh, analysts say that really this does seem to be a genuine belief by the Chinese, particularly Xi Jinping, that the United States and NATO provoked this war um, by expanding into what they see as Russia's backyard, its sphere of influence. Now, I spoke to one uh, uh, senior American expert on Chinese foreign policy uh, to explain a little bit about the background to this position. Let's take a listen. I think that Xi Jinping uh, believes that the United States is now implacably hostile toward China. He saw this start under the Republicans and the Trump administration and now continue under the Biden administration. And I think he has therefore attached more value to Russia and has tilted uh, quite decidedly, decisively towards, uh, toward Russia in this, uh, this war in Ukraine. So according to this reading of Xi Jinping, he is bracing and preparing for this long confrontation with the United States and with the West and sees Russia as an important partner in, in preparing for that. Right. And is there any sign of that changing? Well, the trouble is for China that this war is actually proving a problem for it. Um, it's creating huge instability in the world markets. We've seen the prices of commodities, oil, natural gas, um, wheat, grain, other commodities, all shooting up. Uh, China is very heavily dependent on fossil fuel imports, so this is bad for China's economy. Um, instability in the world economy is just generally bad for the Chinese economic model because it's a big exporting power. It needs you know, good access to, to uh, export markets. Um, so all of this is bad, plus it's potentially dangerous for China's reputation in the world with Russia so isolated. If China is one of the last you know, countries standing by Russia, standing by Russia while we see atrocities taking place in Ukraine. So Xi Jinping does face something of a dilemma here about whether to really kind of double down on that relationship with Russia 
and confront the West, or whether to see whether it can put a little bit of distance between itself and Russia and maybe quietly through back channels try to get Vladimir Putin to move to some sort of police, uh, peace agreement. This is what the Americans certainly hope China will do. OK, so that's, that's China and Russia. Let's talk about uh, uh, China and the US, because th where are relations now between uh, those two countries? Because away from this, during the Trump era, we saw uh, sanctions, we saw uh, uh, trade embargoes, we saw all sorts of uh, things going on. So they're, they're not friends, clearly. Well, well uh, Donald Trump certainly made sort of attacking China one of the centrepieces of his presidency, although he did uh, come up with, with a partial trade deal with the Chinese. Um, but I think uh, this refers back to what we were just talking to early, earlier. It is true that in the United States, a growing consensus has established itself, not just in the Republican Party, not just among, uh, sort of around Donald Trump, but among the Democrats too. This is one of the few areas in American politics where you do have bipartisan agreement that China is the big geopolitical problem for them of this century, uh, and they need to take a tougher line against it. It just so happens at the moment that, of course, uh, China is one of the few countries in the world that, if it were minded to, could potentially get Russia, could have some leverage over Russia to de-escalate in this situation. So it does put... It, it, it's a very, very delicate situation in world affairs right now. OK, so, so if the old sanctions, let's call them that, against China, the, the old US sanctions against China are still in place, what else, then, would President Biden be able to, to throw out this situation? Well, uh, I mean... The level of sanctions, for instance, over Xinjiang, you know, the, 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 the um, oppression of the Uyghurs that, that, that has been taking place in, in uh, the western uh, province of Xinjiang in China, they're not anything like on the kind of level of sanctions that we've seen the United States impose on Russia. Um, but I would kind of go back to what we were saying earlier. There are a couple of levels of things that could take place if uh, the United States decides that China is trying to breach uh, sanctions on Russia, it could impose these secondary sanctions. The big problem is if China supports it militarily. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, Richard Walter, uh, Walker, DW International Editor, thanks very much.